All right, uh, so as you all know, this is an AMA citation style presentation. Uh, first off, uh, and this might be familiar to some of you who took the APA citation uh, webinar with me earlier uh, this year. Um, but first off, a little bit about citation, just sort of as a concept, you know, what is it? Why do we do it? Uh, citation is hugely important, especially in the sciences and even more so in the health sciences in particular, because it's really important that as we enter the scholarly conversation, we track where we're getting our information, where we're getting our data, make sure that it's verifiable, not just for us, but for our readers as well. Um, you know, so much of this scholarly conversation is a dialogue between all sorts of different information being pulled from different sources. And it's really important that we all do our best to keep that straight. Uh, specifically about AMA citation. Uh, so AMA is in the 11th edition at this point. Uh, it's also known sometimes as JAMA citation style, which makes sense if you think about it. You know, the American Medical Association's journal would use the American Medical Association citation style, uh, but the multiple names for it can throw people off sometimes. Uh, so if you see something that requires JAMA citation, it's the same thing as AMA. Uh, the 11th edition was published in fall of 2019. Uh, so it's been out for about a year at this point. Um, there's still certain things that I am familiarizing myself with. Um, so as I mentioned here, uh, in addition to the updates to citations and references, there have also been updates to preferred terminology, patient first language, various grammar rules and regulations, um, and that kind of stuff I personally am not so familiar with. Uh, but if you have questions about that, I am happy to look into it and answer that for you. Uh, that would just probably be something I'd need to email you about later as opposed to do right now. Uh, so the formatting for citations themselves in AMA style. Uh, your references should be numbered in the order in which they appear in the text and then listed in numerical order at the end of the paper as endnotes. Uh, so this includes as you go throughout the paper, uh, if you refer to an article more than once, you would use whatever that same number was from the first time that you cited it. Uh, so let's say like you were repeating um, from one of the examples on here, Roberts, who is the sixth reference there. Even if you cited Roberts again, you know, 20 or 30 references later, you would still just use that number six to delineate Roberts. Uh, as this slide mentions, there are a couple of exceptions to being in the, nu the numerical list at the end of the paper. Uh, and these two things are personal communications and materials not yet accepted for publication. For both of those, you would include a brief in-text citation. Uh, as you can see here, these two examples, you would need the name of the person you were communicating with, what type of information you got from them. So in this case, uh, there's unpublished data or an email, and then the date that you communicated with them or the date that the data was created. Um, and I should emphasize, materials not yet accepted for publication are different than preprints. Um, we'll go into preprints a little more later in the presentation, uh, but those have been accepted for publication. They just haven't actually been published yet. This is only for data or articles who have not been accepted for publication at all. Uh, and then grammatically, so placing the superscript outside of periods and commas and inside colons and semicolons. Uh, so you can see the examples there. That's just one of those little sort of nitpicky uh, grammar rules that they have. All right, so I have some examples of the most common, I would say, citations that you guys are probably going to be doing with AMA. Uh, the book citation is fairly straightforward. Uh, you have the author's last name and initials. Uh, there are no periods in the initials and there's no comma between the last name and the initials. Uh, so it looks a little different. If you're familiar with APA, it's similar, but just enough different. Uh, and then you have the title in italics. Uh, you, you have to include the number of the edition unless it is the first edition or the only edition, uh, in which case you would just omit that completely. Uh, so let's say this was the only edition of Gray's Anatomy for Students. You would go straight from Gray's Anatomy for Students to Elsevier 2020. Uh, and then as this note here at the bottom mentions, if you're working with something that has more than six authors, 
whether that's a book or an article, whatever that might be, you would only list the first three authors followed by at all, just to cut down on the length of the citation. A chapter to book looks very similar to the book citation. As you can see here, uh, you have the authors of the chapter listed first, then the title of the chapter, and then you just say in, colon, and then you list the citation for the book itself. Uh, the only difference there is you tag on the page numbers of the chapter at the end. So pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And same with the article citation. Uh, so for this, you have the author's last name and initials, the title of the article and the subtitle of the article. Uh, keep in mind that the title of the article and the subtitle of the article are supposed to be in sentence case. Uh, so you only capitalize the first letter or, uh, for example, in this uh, example I have, you have COVID-19 and African-Americans. You do still capitalize proper nouns, uh, for COVID-19, since the accepted uh, nomenclature there includes all caps for COVID, you would maintain the capitalization there. Uh, but other than that, sentence case. Uh, the title of the journal, the year it was published, the volume and issue, and then the page numbers. Uh, and then last but not least, you do have the DOI. Uh, if a DOI is unavailable, as this note says, you can use the bioarchive number. Um, but if it has neither a DOI nor a bioarchive number, then you would include the URL, assuming, of course, that this was an online article that you had accessed and not the physical print journal. Uh, and also, the DOI should not be listed as a URL. It should just be DOI colon and then the alphanumeric string there. And I did want to specifically talk about preprints or they're sometimes known as articles in press or EPUB ahead of print. There's a few different ways journals refer to them. Um, but we've seen a huge uptick in people needing to cite articles that have been accepted for publication, but not yet actually published. Uh, so here's an example of how to cite those kinds of articles. Uh, as you can see, it's almost the same as a, an article that has actually been published. Uh, however, after the title of the journal, you mention that it is a preprint, and then you list the date that it was posted online. Uh, so as you can see in the example that I have here, uh, it was posted online August 7th of 2020. Uh, and I believe this one specifically is listed as it will be published in January of 2021. Uh, so if whatever I was working on was published after January of 2021, I would need to go back in and update this to a citation for the actual published piece. Um, but if I was publishing something in, you know, November of 2020, before that final uh, publication happens, I would just maintain this preprint citation. Uh, and again, this article and press citation, if the article has a bio archive number, they want you to include it. Uh, if not, then you can just omit that and the DOI. Uh, since you're only going to be dealing with recent articles that are going to be published, you're not going to be dealing with, you know, uh, articles that were initially in print and then scanned, everything should have either a bioarchive number or a DOI. All right, so next is government documents, which are Fairly straightforward, uh, monographs follow book formatting and articles follow journal article formatting. Uh, as you can see here, I have two examples, one of each, uh, for government documents that have been published by a governmental organization. Uh, if there are other authors listed, as there are in these two examples, you would list those authors first, and then with a semicolon, separate it from whatever the government organization was that published them. Uh, if there were no other specific authors named, if it was just the government organization, you would just list the government organization as the author. Uh, and then as my one of my notes down here says, you may need to include either an update date or an access date at the end of the citation. Uh, that really just depends on whether or not the document is likely to change. Uh, for the most part, there not likely to change if they're finalized reports and that kind of thing. 
Uh, but if you're unsure at all, it's better safe than sorry. Just include the access date to be sure. And then websites. Uh, so websites, again, fairly straightforward. Author, last name, title of the specific item. Uh, and they include of the specific items cited just because you might be citing a PDF or a blog entry or a news article that's listed on this website. Um, so instead of using the title of the web page, unless that is what you're citing, you want to cite that specific item that you're citing there. Uh, and then, of course, the title of the website as a whole. Uh, you want to include the date published. If there is any updated information in there, you want to include the date that it was updated. Uh, of course, the access date, since these sorts of websites are more likely to change over time, and then the URL. Uh, and again, you can see in the example I used here, it's from the Pew Research Center. So we include Pew Research Center as the institutional author here after the three initial named authors. All right, uh, so those are the most common uh, resources that you're going to be citing, most likely. Um, I also wanted to include some links to online resources. And again, I'll be sending out this slide deck so you don't have to worry about like jotting down the URLs real quick or anything. Uh, so the first one is the actual AMA Manual of Style. Uh, Himmelfarb has institutional access, so you guys are more than welcome to go ahead and use that through us. Uh, the link here will take you to the entry in our catalog. You will probably need to log into the library website or be connected via the VPN in order to actually access everything through that link. Um, but that way, if you have a specific question or a section that you want to look at, you can go ahead and access that text directly. Uh, secondly, we have the AMA Style Insider blog where the AMA posts updates, uh, news flashes, you know, any sort of uh, additional information you might need about the manual of style. Um, and then I also, it's the first time I've done this, but I included the AMA manuals Twitter. Uh, they're very good about responding to you if you at them with a question about, hey, how do I do this? You know, where in the book would I find information on this? They usually respond to you in a pretty timely manner. I also included our AMA research guide. Uh, you'll find examples and how to's on most of the different citations that I already included in the presentation, as well as additional ones like social media or newspapers that are in print. You know, we have examples of a lot of different things. So if you're ever trying to cite something that wasn't included in this presentation, that's a really good place to start looking. Uh, it's a little more accessible than the AMA Manual of Style. Uh, and then last but not least, we have Purdue OWL's AMA guide. Uh, the Purdue OWL, or I believe OWL stands for Online Writing Lab, is a phenomenal research uh, site, not just for AMA, but for any sort of citation style that you might have questions about. Um, but I highly recommend checking them out as like a third party information resource. All right, um, I also wanted to let you guys know uh, the website at GW at Himmelfarb has a citation generator built into it. Uh, AMA is one of those slightly obscure citation styles. So not a lot of those free generators that are out on the web will have them available as uh, one of the basic uh, citation styles. However, if you go click through to a listing in our catalog, and then under that send to link there, you see citation is the first thing listed. If you click on citation, it pulls up this list of APA, AMA, MLA, et cetera. Uh, and then if you just click on the citation style you're using, it will generate a citation for you. Uh, I do have to caution you just to double check these. Um, as it mentions in the screenshot there, remember to check citations for accuracy before including them. Uh, if you look at like this citation, uh, there's an extra space after students before the period and then fourth edition there. So you just want to make sure that grammatically everything looks right and that it pulled the correct information from the right places in the catalog listing. Um, but it can save you a little bit of time, so it's a good thing to know. 
another really great resource that we have at GW uh, to help with not only citations, but every step of the writing and research process is the GW Writing Center. Um, they're currently online only appointments with trained consultants, so uh, students who have gone through, I believe it's a semester long class, training them in how to work with you on your writing. Uh, before the pandemic, we had a satellite location located in Himmelfarb, where there would be someone who specialized in the health sciences, usually a graduate student of some sort, who uh, would be there for a few hours and you could make appointments with them or stop by. Uh, as of right now, that's not open, but our plan is, uh, you know, whenever campus is able to reopen fully, we do plan on reopening that satellite location. Uh, and then for additional information on them or to schedule an appointment, you can go to their website. Uh, you can also call them and I believe they have a chat service uh, as well at the moment. So if you need to get a hold of them, they're very, very useful. Uh, and then I also wanted to just mention RefWorks. Uh, I know a lot of folks are familiar with RefWorks already, but for any of you who might not be, uh, RefWorks is a citation manager that we subscribe to at Himmelfarb and that we offer to you guys uh, free. Uh, and the great thing is that this free account stays with you even after you graduate, you know, unlike your email address where you lose that after you graduate, uh, the RefWorks account stays with you, stays open, you can continue to use it. Uh, so even if you're working on longer term research projects, it's a really phenomenal resource there. Uh, and on top of that, it's library supported, so we can help you with questions you might have about how to you know, deduplicate your RefWorks or about how to, uh, you know, import batch citations from PubMed or something like that. Uh, we can sort of help walk you through that process if you haven't done it before. Uh, and then depending on which version of RefWorks you get, there's a classic one or a uh, ProQuest RefWorks, and they offer the same functionality. Their interface just looks a little different. Um, and the classic one offers integration with Microsoft Word. And then the newer one offers both Word integration and Google Docs integration. There's plugins that you can install for both of those. Uh, if you'd like to sign up for a RefWorks account or get some more information on it, you can go to that RefWorks research guide that's listed there. Uh, and that'll have information on how to sign up and how to contact us if you have any questions about it. And then last but not least, I wanted to include some information on how to get a hold of us at the library. Uh, so we have here our reference chat hours. Uh, if you go to the library website and click on the little ask us tab that pops out, uh, there'll be somebody there to answer your questions 8.30 a.m. to 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Monday through Thursday, and then 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Friday. Uh, you're also welcome to email us at himmelfarb at gw.edu. And if you have any questions specifically for me about AMA, uh, you can email me personally at skonig1 at gw.edu. Uh, and then this final uh, URL here is a survey that we ask everyone to fill out, just asking about, you know, what did you think of the class? Have any suggestions for us? Anything you think might be helpful? Uh, and that's especially useful uh, for this class in particular. This is the first AMA citation webinar we've done. So I'm not sure, you know, what's most useful for you guys. So if you have any suggestions that you'd like to see me uh, work on for the next time we do this AMA webinar, please do let me know.